Okay, it's been a long time since I've done a review video because I've been at university and gradually I did less and less of these and I decided just to focus on university work for now. But now I've just finished university, I decided I'd start up doing a few more videos. So this time I have for you a review of a single board computer which is similar to others such as, such as the Beagle board or the Raspberry Pi, but they, it is a little bit different. The company kindly sent this out to me. I'll tell you a little bit about it before I open it up and show it to you. It's called a PC Drino. This is the third version, the PC Drino 3. It's a high performance, cost effective single board computer. Not only does it run standard uh, Linux operating systems such as Ubuntu, it does also run Android. It does have HDMI uh, output to, for the desktop to a monitor or TV. It supports 1080p at 60 frames a second with a video decoder and it does have built-in hardware video processing. So how is this board different than say a Raspberry Pi? It is a little bit more expensive. Before I start it is compatible with Arduino shields which are add-on boards for the popular Arduinos. So if you have a bunch of Arduino shields or you like the fact that it's compatible that makes this a big bonus to this board. Plus Unlike the Raspberry Pi, it is higher spec. How does this differ from, say, a Raspberry Pi? I'm using the Raspberry Pi mostly as an example because it's made such so much news lately and is a very popular single board computer. For example, they both use ARM processors, but this board uses a slightly newer type of Cortex A7 dual core, the Raspberry Pi single core. The Raspberry Pi is 700 megahertz, is all, unless you overclock it, which if you do, you probably want other accessories to keep it cool. This this uh, processor is one gigahertz. The GPU is OpenGL ES 2.0 with OpenVG 1.1. The Raspberry Pi, depending upon which model you get, either has 256 megabytes or 500 megabytes of of RAM. However, this board has one gigabytes of onboard DRAM which is double the very most that the other most other boards seem to have plus it has got a bit of onboard storage it has four gigabytes of flash storage built in so you, it's possible you wouldn't really you could perhaps use it quite a bit without even needing an SD card though you probably would use an SD card but still you can use it without it but it does support up to a 30 do up to 32 gigabyte SD card uh, however I think it would be nice these days since there's more and more bigger cards such as 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes it'd be nice if it supported at least 64 gigabyte cards but it currently seems to only support 32 as I mentioned earlier it has HDMI 1.4 with support for HDCP a couple of operating systems that is supported out of the box is Ubuntu 12.04 or Android 4.2 it has Arduino expansion interface so, uh, which supports sockets for Arduino such as the Uno with 14 by GPIOs, 2 by WPM, 6 by ADC, 1 by UART, 1 by SPI, 1 by 12C or I2C sorry. So it has 14 general purpose input output slots Unlike many boards such as the Raspberry, it does actually have built-in Wi-Fi as well as Ethernet. Its Ethernet is up to 100 megabits a second. This isn't really a huge knock or downside against this board. If you compare this board with many, many others, such as the Beagle Bo BeagleBone, the Raspberry Pi, the many uh, other boards, most boards more often than not are like this and are 100 megabits however it would be really nice if it was a uh, one gigabit as uh, you will I believe start seeing more and more boards that support one gigabit such as the new banana pie which is basically a clone of the raspberry pi to add more features you know by another I think I believe a Chinese company so I uh, wish this sort of had that that is a bit of a knock against this but compared to a lot of competitors it isn't also one of the projects that people sort of uh, mention and I believe they mentioned on their site is to use it as a small web server. 
and I believe a one gigabit Ethernet would really help if people were trying to use this as a decent web server. Though of course, you know, any of these boards are not going to be real great super web servers or anything. But still, if people want to use it as a small server, I believe that one gigabit would be so beneficial to that. Audio out. It has a 3.5 millimeter audio out interface, as well as a I2S stereo digital out uh, digital audio interface. It does support an LCD screen attachment with LVDS. It also has, interestingly, IR, so it supports an inf infrared, such as an infrared remote. This is something that the Raspberry Pi does not have. So if you, you cr a lot of people use these boards to try and create media centers sort of type devices, kind of like their own homebrew Apple TV box or Ruko. So having a built-in ability to have infrared so people can turn this into a media center for the TV and use a remote control is quite a good idea whereas if you're turning out another board such as a Raspberry into a media center free TV you may have to modify it try to get some sort of a third party attachment something like that you don't have to do that with this this unlike the Raspberry and unlike quite a few boards also has a SATA host socket it also has MIPI for a camera I should say, you know, the Raspberry does, but not all boards do have support for an external camera. It actually has a Li LiPoly battery interface for a battery as well. For USB, it has one USB host and one USB OTG. For power, it uses 5 volt, 2000 milliamp. Its overall size is 121 by 65 millimeters. It looks a little different from some boards because it's looks a little longer and more stretched but it's thinner there's nothing wrong with that it makes it a bit more unique I feel anyway API so if you're a developer how you know a lot of people who look at these boards are for development trying to create things so what does it have in that way the uh, the Arduino shield pins are accessible via APIs it consists of APIs to access the following interfaces according to their website UART, ADC, PWM, general purpose input outputs I2C, SPI, and for program language support, out of the box it supports C, C++ with the GNU toolchain, Java with the standard Android SDK, and Python. So that's before just going into more and more about this. Let's just actually unbox this, shall we? It comes in a standard little cardboard box like most of these boards. Okay. Okay, here it is, as you can see, PC Duino, PC Duino 3. There is a little QR code. I'll try to get it to focus here so you can actually use that code if you want. Right, here we go. Not sure if that's usable for you. I have to look back in the video when I edit it. But yeah, basic cardboard box. And let's try to get this open where you can actually see. I'm using a 50mm lens. On, I'm using a 50 millimeter lens on a Sony STR uh, DLSR, so I can't zoom and unzoom. So bear with me. That's just to focus for you. Here we go. Comes in an anti-static packet, like most boards. I should say though, when you're using these without a case, a lot of people just set them down on the packet. I wouldn't do that because the inside is anti-static but not the outside. I'd more recommend doing what I tend to do and set it on the top of the actual, just the actual cardboard box. Okay, let's take it out of the packet. Okay, here is the board out of the packet. Now the problem I have with all these anti-static packets that these development boards and single board computers come in is when you try to take them out they tend to get quite stuck on the little pin bits and stuff and it can be quite awkward to take out. People can't find a way around that, there's nothing exclusive to this one though. Just, I don't know if anybody else finds that. Okay, so what sort of things do we have on here? Well obviously here in the middle is the actual processor but I'm not going to point out what every single little chip is. Let's see what the actual ports, some of the ports are here. Here, over here, whoops, out of focus. Here it is, is a USB. 
this here on my finger here, if I can get this camera lens to focus, is the SATA. Next to it here is, H is the HDMI. Next to that, next to the HDMI, next to the HDMI here is the 100 megabit Ethernet. The little bits uh, that stand up here, like little uh, black walls, are the various GPIOs and pins. There's all sorts of pins there. Now, if we turn or turn the board around, here you can see on this side you have, like I mentioned a minute ago, a USB port and a little teeny power port for the 5 volt next to it. I just noticed looking at the SD uh, card slot when I was about to mention that, this does not use a full size regular SD card like the Raspberry, so if you plan on using one from another board such as Raspberry, you won't be able to, you'll need to use a smaller one. And here, I can point out here, is I believe the SD card slot, I was just about to put one in but I've got with me a full size one, so I can't demonstrate that right now. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a lot more sort of stretched it looks a lot more narrow and long than most boards but makes it I believe stand out a little bit more okay so in conclusion the PC Drino is a mini PC and development board some uses for this is just as a mini PC so you can use it as a little PC maybe do a bit of programming on web browsing wherever you may want or you could turn it into a media center for your TV and it is more powerful than some of the other uh, competitors. It costs around $77. You can probably get it around about £60 over here. Uh, Maplins over here has it but for £60, but it does seem to be version 2, not version 3. Also, if you're looking for a development board, this is a good uh, choice because you get a bit of extra juice, a bit of extra power. You've got better specs than a lot of development boards and at the same time is compatible with Arduino Shields. So this is definitely a good alternative to some of the more well-known boards such as the Arduinos, especially if you want a lot of power. The only downsides I've seen to this board is that it has 100 megabit Ethernet instead of 1 gigabit, which most of the development boards I've seen for sale uh, most of the competitors only do have 100 megabit. Very, very, very few have 1 gigabit. However, since it's a bit more powerful and they even have tutorials on, I think, their site about using this as a small server, I think 1 gigabit would have been so much more beneficial. You can also only use a maximum of a 32 gigabyte SDHC card. There is no SDXC support for 64 gigabytes and bigger. However, all in all, the pros outweigh the cons. So thank you for watching this review. I hope you liked it. Please like, comment and subscribe. Thanks.